Hello my soccer universe! Chelsea wins the Champions League. I decided to put on my first ever and probably still favorite Chelsea jersey that I have. Full disclosure, I actually had was slightly for Chelsea in this final. And yes, there are many things that we can say. There was the first tit uh, Champions League title or European title for Thomas Tuchel. We had the first American playing and winning in the Champions League, but that's not all important. What important is, uh, we have the first last player, former last player, uh, winning the Champions League, Mateo Kovacic. True, he only played his youth soccer there for, and from the age of 7 to 13, but hey, he was born in Linz, my hometown. He played for a local school that actually was quite good in soccer and he played for Lask in the youth team. Then he went into Nantina Zagreb and a career started I still. Uh, there's an argument to be made. He is the best ever player to have worn the Lask shirt because a player going from Lask to Dinamo Zagreb to Inter Milan to Real Madrid and now to Chelsea and winning, being a four Champions League winning squads and now for the first time playing, this is what I'm focusing on. <laughs> After that silliness, it's time to uh, go a little bit more into uh, the final itself, which honestly was a really open final, especially the opening exchanges. Uh, the part of it was down to the, and we'll talk about that uh, lineup of Guardiola, uh, but you know, down of it was the very offensive lineup for Pep Guardiola trying to really strike on Chelsea early. Part of, part of it was that Chelsea found a way to actually take the ball from City and then creating many, many chances. Uh, but the one thing is, despite it being an open game, and I think it was, it was a really good final most of the time, they were not met that many chances. Uh, I think none of the goalies had to make a huge save or whatsoever. Uh, that was for me the one thing that maybe uh, prevented from being a true classic. We have to talk, of course, first we had spectators in there, uh, as already with the Europa League final. And despite me, you know, I could live with the non-sound, I got used to it. But it feels a different game. Uh, there was something there, and especially with Tuchel then being the cheerleader on the sideline, really pumping his uh, the fans up to support the team. That is something that adds another wrinkle there. And you know, I have not. I th uh, who was it? Um, some player uh, late in the half was can say, I, "I don't hear anymore. I don't hear." That is something I haven't heard in a long, uh, seen in a long time. Uh, and that's not even a full stadium. So yeah. Um, as I said, I think it was a good game. Chelsea really deserved to uh, win this game. Um, I think Guardiola once again outsmarted himself. Um, it was in a way a knockout game. We had two uh, substitutions for injuries, which I found also a um, bit, uh, you know, uh, especially in the first half already when Thiago Silva came out uh, uh, off and then uh, later Kevin De Bruyne. So uh, two pretty big uh, names for their team, pretty important players had to come off. So yeah, uh, there were quite a few interesting things in there. Uh, I would say let's, may, uh, let's get back through the game and uh, I try to remember everything that happened in there. The first thing that I will do uh, re uh, re remember, I mean, I really like that how... Uh, I, I will knock on Pepper <laughs> a little bit. Uh, the one thing is that Pep seems to be a lot more relaxed these days and you could see this act in, in interaction with Tuchel and I know when they were uh, Bayern and Dortmund coaches really respectively they were meeting up and they had some uh, meetings amongst each other so there is a, a kind, of, kind, of, kind of respect in there. However the big surprise uh, coming in, in, into this game is that Guardiola decided to go with Sterling instead of either Rodri or Fernandinho. So he had no defensive midfield in it. A super offensive lineup. And <laughs> you really already there you thought, what has he up his sleeve or is he now outsmarting himself again? Turned out to be 
the second and uh, especially when we look at the goal I think you could see it very very very, very clearly but even before that already uh, but before I go into it um, I was very impressed by the way they presented on the field with the fire, fire, fire the opening ceremony, the opening music act. This is a disgrace. We don't need that C A C R A P. Uh, Honestly, with all the virtual reality I saw Friday, Friday, a much, much, much better virtual reality concert. Uh, this is just, uh, we can get rid of that crap. Absolutely, we don't need that. I, I, it, it takes, it doesn't amp up the, especially the music is not even there to amp you up. It's, a, it's dance music. I'm sorry. You can play this like an hour before the game. You have a little new music. We don't need that. This is too American. And you know, there they have a halftime, time, time, time show, and that get a music act that pumps up the crowd with something, something not like this marsh, whatever, bucket head thing. Yeah, and bucket head is uh, uh, plagiarism as well. Look up bucket head. <laughs> yeah, uh, it just bugs me. But yeah, the game itself, I mean, due to the very, very offensive lineup for Pep, uh, right from the kickoff. City put Chelsea on the back foot and I think it took Chelsea about 10-15 minutes to really get a grip of the game and seeing okay we have to defend here against six offensive players who are very good at the ball, who, who control the ball. Um, however, once Chelsea had the first chance and I think it felt, it, the first uh, really big run was then down uh, the left where then uh, the ball came to Werner who basically shot himself on his own foot or in, in, in a way, I don't want to say typical team to team Werner because he was working his A off uh, and really uh, contributed great, greatly, especially uh, I'll talk about at the, at, at the lean goal, but you know, at, at that moment you thought, oh yeah, of course, there's no um, problem there. But it was really then, um, at first, Chelsea was trying to absorb what City was throwing at them. But once they got a group of the game and once they saw, okay, it is not Gundogan who is making now the uh, the runs uh, from coming a little bit deeper up front. No, Gundogan is kind of the security blanket. That is Fernandinho or Rodri and he is not really dead. There is a lot of empty space and we can, uh, and, they, and all these guys are not so super physically and we can get the ball from them. And this is how many of Ch of, of Chelsea's came, it's just, just uh, ball winning. And who is the best ball winner in the world at the moment? It's, uh, and I mean, it's Kante. I mean, uh, Chelsea played a great team game with all the parts fitting into a larger uh, piece. But, and everyone, I, I Cannot say that one was a little bit off. I mean, uh, Reese James at, at the beginning had some trouble, um, uh, but he settled himself after 10, 10, 10 minutes and was really, really, really good. But I think despite all that, Conte to me stood out uh, just a level higher than everyone. He was everywhere and he used this kind of empty space in the defensive midfield fully to his, 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 his advantage. Also, Jorginho, I think, was uh, not as an uh, imposing presence as Conte, but uh, definitely threaded things very, very, very well. So, yeah, uh, this for me was uh, the most interesting part that uh, it took Chelsea 10, 15 minutes. But then Chelsea had more chances and there was one beautiful, again, um, Beautifully played, Chilwell hovers up, up, up front and the ball again falls to Werner, who only can get, get off a kind of a timid shot. But you know, chances that there were, this was already two good chances, which uh, with a little bit of better finish uh, would have worked. The next chance then fell uh, to City, uh, who actually had a little bit earlier, early, the only proper shot on goal when um, I think Reese James lost Sterling, who then uh, Mondi could uh, save the sh it was not really a really shot, but uh, he could uh, draw him off and then Sterling with a back heel from never really have, 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 have a chance. This was the only shot for Manchester City on goal in the entire game. I do count, however, this chance. It was around the 27th, 28th minute where De Bruyne coming up left, Pell playing a ball into Foden who suddenly runs free on goal and uh, he takes the shot, but uh, with a lunging tackle, uh, Rüdiger with his foot 
blocks that shot. I think if he does not do the block, and this is probably the most valuable uh, piece of defending in the entire game, if he doesn't block a shot, I think Foden makes the goal there. That was the biggest chance for uh, Manchester City, uh, at least to my understanding. Then the game kind of settled a little bit, but I, I had the feeling that uh, Chelsea were sticking more to their plan and Manchester City definitely was um, unsettled by have not having uh, their usual system in, in any way. And this is what, 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 what I don't understand. Guardiola has been doing very well so far this season by not overthinking things, by taking, uh, making the defensive stability, having stones and um, what's the name? Poor Portuguese guy can't can't remember now. Having them back there uh, and then in front having Fernandinho roll or roll to have really this uh, defensive stability that you need. They didn't have that. And Chelsea actually was you using that. And I think for me, the goal exemplified all the problems uh, that uh, Manchester City had. Because the ball coming out from Mendy to Chilwell with a wonderful uh, first touch. Now I remember. Gets Ruben Dias follow um, with Harvard. Paul pulls him out. So everyone needs to move a little bit up. Which is of course um, what Stones does. Uh, when he then runs with Werner to take away that path. So both of the defenders have him pushed to, 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 to the sideline. And now it is Sinjenko all the way on uh, his left, left of him, making a huge gap up there. That uh, Jill, um, uh, Jill, uh, Mount, Chilver makes a, uh, the, the wonderful touch, goes to Mount, and then Mount sees that open space and plays, plays a wonderful pass into Harvard's. If there was a defensive midfielder, I think that space does not open up. Harveston runs clear, clear on goal. Ederson comes out, touches the ball with his hand outside. Uh, but it goes so far that Harvard can go through and make the goal. He even looks up and in a post-match interview, he said, yeah, I needed to look up where the goal is not that I'm the big idiot again. It was a really well-played goal. Um, I also think that if uh, this was would, would, would not have been a, a, a goal. Ederson would have been sent off uh, with a red, red card because he clearly touched with his hand, but it stood that way. And it was a deserved lead for Chelsea at the half. Um, second, um, before that, we had already Thiago Silva coming uh, off for Christensen, which exactly at that moment I, I thought, hmm, this might, because Thiago Silva is great in defense. Uh, they are to really, and you, 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 you can see he, he was clearly shaken by that. But Christensen came in and, you know, maybe that was exactly what, what they needed. Um, because now from, from now it was just defending, defending, defending. And they got a few minutes later, they get the goal. It's all settled. Second half, yes. Uh, Chelsea concentrated on keeping it tight and getting a clean sheet. Um, sometimes a little bit rough, especially uh, for Antonio Rüdiger, the way he knocked uh, Kevin De Bruyne out of the game, I thought was, um, yeah, he needed to do it. I mean, I didn't understand because when I look at the replay, I don't see that the De Bruyne being hit by Rüdiger anyway, but it's knocked the life out of him. He clearly probably got concussed and yeah caused a big break in the game and that was the one thing is whenever there was this break I always thought that City initially got better in and then Chelsea needed to steady, steady themselves. Then uh, right after play resumed there was a big call for a potential penalty I think it was Reese James um, and unfortunately the replay never never really cleared from the two replays that I saw I don't know, because the referee always pointed, no, it was clearly here, 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 because the City players were uh, com 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 complaining like crazy. Um, I never really saw a proper resolution to that, because the two replays I, I saw, I thought, they have a point. But maybe not, maybe it hit here, the arm line, you couldn't see it. So I give the benefit of the doubt to Laos, who actually was a really good referee. Uh, that, that, that was the only critical situation in the entire game. Um, and he quickly waved it off and then uh, they looked at the VAR and, and uh, further. But uh, there was not really a, a long stoppage also to look, look at it. So I'm not sure 
How exactly? So uh, this is a scene that I would have liked to see again, but I have not. Uh, anyone had talked about it uh, on after the game, or I didn't see it even in the highlights now. So maybe who knows? Uh, but I would have loved to see another re uh, replay there. That's for sure. And then uh, with all the pressure that City made, they, they still couldn't get a shot, 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 shot goal. There was one uh, nice pass where the one really good goal attack, but then Aspilicueta um, pushes it away from uh, Mares over the bar. Basically, the biggest chance fell when Pulisic came on. A few minutes later, uh, Harvard and Pulisic. And Harvard, I don't know, man, man of it. For me personally, it was Kante, but I think Harvard had another excellent, excellent game, uh, being really instrumental in attacks. And he sets up Pulisic, who then, um, yeah. He tries to lob it over Ederson. It was a really tight angle, but I really thought this is the 2 0. But when you see it a little bit in replay, it was not that easy as it looked at first to make that one. It's 2 0. The game is settled right there, there, and then. Then Raheem Sterling finally comes off. I mean, for, uh, er, er, earlier, uh, Bernardo Silva come, comes off uh, for Fernandinho. So it took perhaps 64 minutes to realize his technical mistake. and. I'm an amateur. I really don't want... Pep is one of the best coaches out there. But that seemed to be a technical mistake. I'm sorry. Uh, it didn't work out. So it took a long, long time for that. It was after the De Bruyne um, injury that uh, they made that exchange. Uh, other than that, I think Chelsea kept it tight. Chelsea um, let City come but really kept them away from, from goal. I think there was another chance from Mares in the deep stoppage time, seven minutes, and then the celebrations came. Uh, and I was a little bit taken aback. Yes, after Champions League win, you see celebrations, uh, but the way that the team was together, I mean, it's a look at Kepa, he was, a, he couldn't believe it. I mean, there were players in there that didn't play that were almost as happy as the players that actually did play, which is something you don't see, 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 see often. I, uh, this was an outpouring of joy and disbelief of what we just did that I have not seen in a long, long time. They clearly saw themselves as the big outsiders, as late the big dragon. And uh, yeah, to, to be honest, I mean, Chelsea never was a big favorite in this season. But they pull, pull, pull it off. I mean, we, we talked about the path to the final. Uh, Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid. Porto um, won tends to all overlook, but this is the only team that they lost to. So, yeah, uh, was a really... Uh, this was remark marvelous. I mean, this outpouring of joy from them. I also liked how uh, Guardiola fairly congratulated Tuchel, Tuchel in the post-match in interview. They asked about the first thing, and this was also I, I, I really found it interesting. He immediately pulled it towards his family. How thankful he is! How they were there for him. It's all for them. Uh, you saw him playing with with his daughters, and and so on. I think this was really really uh, nice touch. Um, then. The Champions League presentation, I have to say, I mean, for me, uh, Aspilicueta now has lifted two trophies, the Europa League and the Champions League. For me, honestly, Aspilicueta is not one of those kept. I mean, but I said that about Puyol uh, uh, as well when he lifted the first trophy. That I don't see, like, in the stature of, like, say, a Maldini or a Viali, uh, you know, those grand captains. Aspilicueta for me is not there, but yeah, he was really. He was. You could see, I mean, he could not believe it that he's touching this trophy and everyone had their private moment. And yes, I always said I don't like that they touched the trophy first. But yeah, now that the, um, the captain gets it last and not first, I think it's okay. Um, still, don't touch the trophy before the captain lifts it. But I, I, I was okay. You could see how people just couldn't believe how it goes. And then they went and took the trophy to the fans, which was another really, really nice touch. Uh, maybe the joy came also from there because you finally play in front of your fans again and how they immediately went to the fans. Here it is what we won. Here it is. We did it. Now, um, a few parting thoughts. I predicted uh, that City will win 3-1 or something like that. And I don't know if I said it in my preview vi video. 
I always thought that the game will go two ways, and this is the one one thing you you make the preview video and then you ah, I forgot that this did this. There are two ways that I thought that the game could go. It's either three will win for uh, City or one nil win for Chelsea. We got the one nil win for Ch uh, for Chelsea. Um, again, bogey team. Uh, Chelsea remains City's bogey team in uh, in in a way, especially this season. And Pep will work hard on that to get past Tuchel. Uh, also, you have to congratulate Chelsea for seeing when Frank Lampard was not working out any anymore. He couldn't find his squad, and you saw there's Thomas Tuchel available. And many said it, it it didn't make much sense the way Tuchel came in, learned the squad. Gave them first defensive sp stability and then tried to use it and to really figure out which what are the, what are the strengths of our players and putting it in the right place. That's a pretty impressive job. Again, Chelsea win uh, a Champions League after having sacked the coach um, earlier. Di, Di Matteo came, came out a little bit later. However, I think that Tuchel's impact was bigger because Di, Di Matteo basically uh, let Lampard and uh, John Terry back in. So, uh, and that gave them uh, the leadership on the field. Whereas here, really, uh, this team suddenly on a tactical level totally excelled. It wasn't pretty to watch, especially the first few, few, few months, but Chelsea started to get results. Uh, so an absolute outstanding job by Tuchel. It has, has, has been, it shows that it was an unpopular decision to letting go of Frank Lampard. And I really wonder what Frank Lampard was thinking about it, but yeah. That's uh, where it went. The other thought is, when Kai Havertz scored the goal for Chelsea, this was the first time that Chelsea was in a lead in a Champions League final. The first time that Chelsea was in a lead. They have won two trophies, but they led in a Champions League final only once. In this one. It was also the first time that they didn't go to penalties, uh, which is an uh, interesting part, of course. And then uh, on the City side, you and I should have thought better, 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 better of it. You just don't win the Champions League on your first trip to the final. The last time that a team that has never won the Champions League or the European Cup before has won the trophy for the, on, on the first time was Borussia Dortmund against Juventus in '97, and that was an upset for the ages. So um, just take that in in it card. Manchester City will probably be back. I think that within two or three years they will win this trophy. But the uh, Champions League trophy in one way is easy to win if you have a good squad together because especially in the group stage, if you're a good team, you uh, don't have to, you just have to go through it, don't have to face that stiff competition. Yes, it is luck, but if you're not like this, it's not like a league where you have to be con consistent, you have to bring it to the point. And sometimes even a game or two is enough to go through. So you have a little games to play. And uh, so it can produce Chelsea, who was not among the top favorites, but definitely among, I would say top eight, top 10, teams in the Champions League this year, it is always possible for them. However, you need to have kind of the experience of losing it. And I liked it where that many players that came through it, I think uh, Guardiola only left the field after the trophy was lifted, soaked this in. As I said, I think Manchester City will build back and they probably eventually will win it. Uh, there is just too many good players there. But let's see. Um, but I don't think I will win it next season. And now this is in the really conjecture. Uh, remember the last two winners. Bayern Munich were completely outclassed by Liverpool the year before in the round of 16. Uh, especially in the return leg where they lost 3-3-1 three, three, at home. Chelsea then was in turn and they won the Champions League. Chelsea then was in turn on their run to the Champions League for Bayern Munich. Completely outclassed in the round, round 6 by Bayern Munich. At that point, this was just a year ago, a year and a little bit more ago, similar to Bayern. You never thought that Chelsea is going to win this uh, champ the Champions League within a year. You never thought that. Here they are. Now, if the trend continues, who will win next year? Chelsea beat Atletico Madrid and Atletico. It was not emphatic, but it was rather convincing. You never thought that Atletico Madrid will win it, given the story. Atletico Madrid. Winners in the 22 Champions League. You heard it here first. In any case, uh, this almost ends the European club season for me. I will do a video on all the um, stuff with um, playoffs 
and who will go up and go all down at different leagues. I will post, put all the leagues together. Um, I'm afraid I will not have the time, but I would love to do it to make you kind of uh, give out grades for all the teams in the leagues that I'm looking at. Um, but this may have to wait because I think I will switch into Euro mode very quickly where you will get um, quite a... F you will get my jersey review and a, a little bit of preview videos there as well. Uh, but I, uh, I will now go a little bit less videos or not as complicated videos as I do during the club season. But let's see how it goes. Any case, I want to know your thoughts on the Champions League final. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get, I get updated whenever something is happening in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.